Hi everyone and welcome to the Azam Sharp channel on YouTube. I'm your host Mohammad Azam with another awesome video and this time we'll be talking about iOS 7. Happy iOS 7 day which is yesterday. Um, so I'm going to what I'm going to do in this tutorial or in this screencast is go over different aspects of iOS 7. Now I cannot really cover all of them so I'm just going to cover three of them or four of them really quickly really like the tip of the iceberg so that you'll know that uh, what is there to come in the future tutorials uh, we're going to cover a little bit of UI kit dynamics UNS URL session and also the JavaScript core or JS core library or framework uh, that will allow you to call JavaScript methods from your objective C but before I even do that here is what iOS 7 looks like. If you have an iPhone, you might have already upgraded to uh, iOS 7. The thing about iOS 7 is that the crisp and clean look, okay? Everything is simplest. There is no, uh, you know, that big uh, shadows. There's no button. There are no buttons. There, there, there are no uh, bars or things like that. Everything is extremely simplified everything is extremely clean the main focus of iOS 7 and iOS 7 application is the content itself so if you have uh, iOS if you have not actually iOS 7 installed on your device that I highly recommend that you do so okay and then you will see that how clean it is everything is very simple very clean um, you know it's uh, it's it's a really good experience and the apps that you will develop will also should uh, resemble what iOS 7 looks like what iOS 7 feels like uh, as we will see okay so I'm using this uh, Xcode which is Xcode 5 it was released with iOS 7 yesterday um, and it's pretty good. Uh, you can see that the, it reflects some of the aspects of iOS 7 framework. It's much more cleaner. It's much more simpler. Um, you know, a lot of work has been put into Xcode. A lot of features, a lot of frameworks has been added. A lot of libraries have been added in iOS 7 uh, framework and in the future tutorials and the future screencasts. I'm going to cover so much, so stay tuned, okay? So let's go ahead and see what is there. So let's go ahead and see this uh, UI Kit Dynamics. So UI Kit Dynamics, and this is a very quick tour. Uh, and later on in the different screencasts, we are going to cover these things in more detail. UI Kit Dynamic allows your UI Kit elements like text box, views. Um, you have a table view, your your collection view. So anything UI Kit you can add some really nice physical properties to it and by physical properties I mean really in a physical world that we live in it's like gravity friction um, and uh, suspensions uh, attachments so there are so many things that you can actually apply to these things uh, to the UI kit elements and let them behave like we see things in the real world okay so we have UI dynamic animator, UI gravity and UI collision. Of course, gravity stands for the gravita uh, gravi gravitational pull. And the collision, of course, stands for that when your view collides with some other view. And the dynamic behavior is the main animator, which actually makes everything work. So let's go ahead and implement a very simple kind of animation. So let's go and I'm going to go in this and create a UI view and this is a simple UI view we all have deal with UI view of course if we are uh, doing any iPhone development right and let's go ahead and create a very simple let's create the background color UI color green I'm actually using my stand-up desk when I'm uh, when I'm typing these things uh, I created a stand-up desk uh, using uh, wooden planks you can go to my website azamsharp.com and you can check out how I did that it is kind of painful right now to be really honest 
but it's been a couple of days so hopefully it, the pain will go away so here it is the UI view I'm gonna run it and you will see oops you will see nothing of course I still have to set that particular um, controller which is I believe it is called UI kit dynamics view controller okay so let's go ahead and run this now and you'll see a simple a green UI view that is displayed on the screen nothing really going on with that and now we can add some really nice UI kit dynamics behavior to add some physical properties to it physical properties meaning gravitational pull okay and collision so we can add all those things now to this so I'm gonna say animator so I'm creating a really uh, that's an animation class or an animator which is responsible for performing all these animations in it with the reference view the reference point you have to give so that it knows the size of the world that on which everything will uh, be based on gravity you know, say UI uh, gravity behavior and then I will say in it with items and uh, simply assign the items on which the gravity will take place so if I do that okay and then I can say animator actually I have to call this guy over here animator and then we can add a behavior to it and we have already created a behavior it's called gravity so let's go ahead and create that behavior of gravity and let's go ahead and run this and see what happens and you can see that the green UI view the block that we created it just fell off the screen so let me run it again because it was pretty quick right and here we go so with few lines of code we have added a physical property to our UI view that physical property is of course gravity now we can stop the gravity or we can stop that uh, UI view from falling down the whole screen by adding a collision okay so I can say UI collision behavior in it with items and pretty much the same syntax that we use for gravity but in this uh, case it is collision um, to provide a boundary of the collision I'm just going to say translates reference bounds into boundary equal to yes which means that whatever reference bounds that we have provided which is self dot view which is the whole screen that you see that will be the boundary for the collision detection uh, and then finally I'm going to add that behavior just like the gravity I'm just going to add it over here and run it so now when it when it actually uh, falls and I don't, I don't think you can see the bottom part of the screen but when it falls it actually stops let me run it again it stops and the uh, the boundary which is the whole view okay so with just a few lines of code you can see that we have added a physical property which is gravity and also collision on our UI view and of course this is just the tip of the iceberg as I said I'm just going going to go through some of these things that are available in the new iOS 7 framework and as I said iOS 7 framework is huge this is just I'm just covering like three things over here all right so let's go on to NS URL session um, I'm just going to go ahead and change the, the guy over here to point to NS URL session it's a session view controller okay let me go ahead and run this so that we know what's going on uh, it sh we should just see a white screen here we go so that's good so we have basically reset all right now before iOS 7 you have the NS URL connection class that you can use to uh, initiate a request okay so if I wanted to initiate a request I will simply do something like this and of course this will be commented 
uncommented. Oops. Now that will take some time now. Um, yeah, that's, I think that's like a bug or something, right? It never comments it out for some reason. I have to do it manually all the time. Of course, you might be wondering, hey, can I use the AF networking library? Yeah, of course you can use the AF networking library. But this is what Apple provided us with NSURL connection. And of course, AF networking library also invokes the NSURL connection, right? So if we invoke this, it's going to go ahead and invoke uh, a URL, which is to get some weather information, and it will simply display completed on the screen. Now, that's too much work. I mean, too many lines of code, what's going on to to do that not not only too many lines of code but um you know you have to say like send a asynchronous and you have to set up the queue and all that and it doesn't even convert to a json which by the way nsc url session does not but you can easily uh, do that by a few lines of code okay so if <clears throat> Here we go. So we'll comment this out. And to do this thing in uh, NSURL session, you're just going to create a NSURL session uh, and get that session from shared session. And you're going to use data task with URL, provide the URL, provide the completion handler, and then display the text. Of course, of course, the data that you receive in the completion handler will not be JSON serialized. Okay, now if you're using AF networking, then AF networking, AF networking does allow you to call uh, some of the overloads of the methods that will allow you to do JSON serialization. But if you want to do like really simple request and get some data, some sort of a text, some sort of a HTML, then you can always use NS uh, URL session, which is included in the iOS 7 uh, SDK. Okay. So that was the NS URL session. I'm going to go over here and show you the last thing that I want to say, uh, show you over here is the JS core view controller. Now this is pretty cool. Now oh, it is raining really hard outside, by the way. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it is really bad outside right now. Um, okay, so let me run this so that we are sure that we are running JS core view controller. Here we are. So JS Core View or JavaScript, the the let me see the JavaScript core library or the framework, it allows your Objective C code to call JavaScript functions, and it also allows your JavaScript function to call your Objective C code. So that is pretty neat, right? So if you have some JavaScript developers i mean I'm, I'm talking about javascript so if if you have any javascript developers they can write those things uh in their language like javascript and your objective c code can then call that okay and uh vice versa they can also do that so i have a simple file it's called azamsharp.js it has a function greet which calls another function hello which is defined in which will be called in the objective c but the greet method is, of course, a JavaScript method. Um, so this is a simple file. This is alumshop.js. It's a very simple file. Uh, it's a you know, plain file. And the one thing you need to do is to copy. You have to go to build faces, and you have to go to copy bundle resources and add that uh, alumshop.js or any file, any JS file that you want to call from Objective-C into a bundle resources. If you don't do that, then of course it will not be part of the bundle and you are not going to do, I mean, you're not going to, you know, have a, a contact to it to invoke it, okay? Let me just copy that code, which actually does all that stuff. All right, so let's see what's going on over here. We have, a, we have not defined a, okay, so we might have over here somewhere so yeah the JS context is basically the heart of it it, it is required to uh, that's basically what what actually calls everything right from the JavaScript point of view like if you're calling the JavaScript method uh, Azam sharp JS we get that script path we get the script string which is basically the whole code that we wrote in the JavaScript file which is just one function um, self dot context we're going to create a context we're going to evaluate the JavaScript and then it says that okay hello 
okay if the hello function is called you're going to call this particular function or this particular block over here which is just going to uh, write on the ns log this is a javascript function it's called greet and then you call it with arguments which are no arguments so if i run this you should see uh, the text is written on the console and here it is welcome to azam sharp channel okay so if i go over here Oh, what's going on all right here we go and let's say edit it so you can see that this will be the function that is being called and you can see that over there in the console it says edit it so it's pretty cool because now you can easily call um, from Objective C, you can easily call JavaScript function. From JavaScript, you can easily call Objective C functions, and you can have different. You know, as I said, you can have different team developers who are JavaScript developers, and they can build something in their JavaScript framework which can easily be called in Objective C and vice versa, right? So that's pretty much it for the tour. Of course, it's it's just uh, there's so many things in iOS 7. There's a sprite. Kit framework, which is for game development, there is a view transitions that you can do your view controller transition. You can build the custom transitions. Uh, the XC tool or XC tool XC tool for unit testing or OC OT, whatever that name is. But there's a, and there's also a, what are those called bars of something that are used for continuous integration there's airdrop there's peer to peer connectivity and there is of course uh text kit text kit is also pretty cool which we're going to cover later uh in the and then of course the background downloading that is pretty awesome feature too that you can just your app can just wake up and start downloading some latest things uh so that is all to come stay tuned okay and go to my blog azamsharp.com if you want to uh, learn more about it and uh, stay tuned uh, like the channel recommend the channel and that's it so thank you very much uh, and stay tuned for more